Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer. Today, we're going to be analyzing Applied Materials stock. Um, this one came in by request down in the comment section of one of my other videos. If you have a request you would like me to analyze, just drop it down in the comment section. I'll get the ticker on the whiteboard behind me, and eventually I will make a video. Um, if it's a stock that's in the S&P 500, uh, like Applied Materials is, um, I'll post that video on YouTube for free. And if it's not at S&P 500, I post those videos on Patreon, which is $5 a month. And in the full Cyclical Investors Club service over on Seeking Alpha. If you join uh, Patreon, you can get a big discount to the full service. Um, and those links will be down in the description. As always, this is not individual investing advice. This is just how I analyze stocks. And Applied Materials is a cyclical stock, if we look back or cyclical business I should say both of them <laughs> cyclical stock and cyclical business um, if we go back to the Great Recession this dark green area here that's their um, adjusted earnings per share you can see that it went totally negative growth wise in um, not even just growth but actual earnings wise just a little bit in 2009 so it fell about a hundred percent hundred and six percent um, quickly recovered, which is what you want to see if you're considered buying a cyclical. It looks like it had another cycle back here that's not on the fast graph. Um, and then also had another down cycle that looks like it's like, in, I don't know, 65% or something like that um, immediately after that. So when we widen this back out, if, if earnings fall more than 50%, usually that's a, a categorization of a cyclical business. But we see in uh, 2019, this is going to be a little bit distorted because of COVID um, in 2020, part of 2020, part of the like half of their 2020 would have been um, during the COVID time. But we see that, and this was a normal, these guys are in the semiconductor industry. It says materials and equipment, um, which are almost always deeply cyclical. So this is normal, um, which is an important thing to know. Uh, this 2018 downturn that went into 2019 was only a 32% decline in earnings. So what, and I see that this is a pattern with pretty much all quality semiconductor stocks, except for maybe Intel. Um, you have a previous, now we haven't had a real recession since this one. So we don't want to get too optimistic here. Because when we have a, a real recession, I don't really count this one as a real recession, especially for any kind of tech because they did well during that time. Um, so when we have another recession, we'll get the real test on how sustainable these earnings are and how cyclical they are now um, relative to back here. But what I think is undeniable is that we are, are, are in a secular growth phase for semiconductor. Um, and so what you basically it makes it difficult to get the bot try to predict the type of bottoms um based on past cycles sometimes because uh, if the past cycles were more cyclical and less secular growth then the past cycles will have deeper cycles basically i don't know if i can do this with my hand but i mean the secular growth well you can see it on the fast graph here so if you draw a line from the troughs, right, the, the, the troughs are getting higher and higher each time they happen. And this year, earnings are expected to come down again. And the peaks, once we get to this one, are getting higher and higher and higher. So that's secular growth. But within that, you can still see the cyclicality, right? So even if we get rid of the last recession, we still have you know, a 60% decline in earnings and then this um, another year where earnings declined 30%, more than 30%, um, and we're expecting some kind of decline next year even though the stock price is now at all time high today. Um, so the cyclicality is still there, but the floor is consistently getting raised on the cycles so far. Um, we'll see what happens. These things can change. If we look at a micron, which I'm long now, 
it has more exaggerated ones that we can actually see here. So again, we have the same pattern with higher highs. This was a little bit of a fluky high, but here's a high, next high higher. The low lasted like, what, a couple years almost. And this low didn't even last a year. Um, and we're back up to new highs, even if you kind of used one of these points as the next high instead of this super duper high, um, which I warned people about by the way, and then I bought it down here. So I've actually owned this one once before and traded the cycle pretty well. I think it made like 50% or something. And my purchase this time was near the low and it's up like 80%. So I do buy these sometimes, even though I have conservative buy prices. But what I wanted to show was, even though we had this secular growth underlying trend for Micron, this particular cycle we're having now still got in earnings, got crushed, okay? Um, now that doesn't mean the high can't come back and be higher than this this high here. Definitely could, probably will eventually. Don't know how many years it's going to take. Um, but just because we've had a secular growth run doesn't mean it can't fall out. Now, Micron's a little more sensitive than some of these others, but it's a good example to see the pattern. Um, so you can see that it doesn't necessarily just because this decline was thirty two percent doesn't mean the next one can't be. 50 or 60 or 70. And when that happens, the people that aren't prepared for it are going to be taken off guard. So you want to understand these. So I use historical. I look at what's happening. I mean, you want some context, which is what I'm trying to give you now. But the historical patterns will give you an idea. And here are some rough drawdown numbers from, from before. So 2001, 80% drawdown. 2008, 68% drawdown. This, these are prices now. 2020, 52%. And there's another one that I'll show you in a second that just happened last year um, with the price that was a little deeper than this. So when I look at this history, I say, okay, um, when's the best time off the high for me to buy this stock during a down cycle? And there are other factors you want to consider like is was it a super cycle you know is there a secular growth trend which is kind of what we have now um but when i look at the basics and i say okay during a great time to buy this is during a recession down cycle it will probably fall 65 percent or more um you also want to keep in mind that they can fall 80 percent right so when you think about where you're buying it if you buy a, imagine a hundred dollar stock that falls 60% off its high, all right? And you're like, okay, that looks like a pretty good deal, right? So you buy it at $40, right? If it eventually falls 80%, it's gonna fall from 40 to 20. So you're gonna be down 50% in that position. So you need to be prepared for that. <laughs> Doesn't mean you're predicting it's gonna happen, but you need to know that it could happen if you're buying a deeply cyclical stock like this. So. For me, I try to kind of limit that downside to like, like put, even if I'm buying a little sooner, I I try to limit that to like 50% draw. I don't usually want to have any stock I own fall more than 50%, even if it eventually goes on to make pretty good money. So my buy price is like 65% off the high. That also will give you a, like a 200% return if it, um, if it recovers or a hundred and what is it? My, yeah, I think it's probably close to 200, right? I mean, by 30, yeah, it'd be almost 200. So if you buy that, then you have a chance for a really good return. So if it takes several years for it to come back, that's okay because you're you're gonna crush it anyway. Um, so you can just buy it and wait when you buy it cheap. You don't have to have, uh, you won't have to suffer through as much of a potential drawdown if there's an unexpected recession. So there's a lot of benefits to buying cheaper. The one thing that's not a benefit is sometimes you don't get the opportunity to buy the stock. Now, I was able to buy AMD and Micron during this last down cycle in 2022, which these guys experienced as well. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple different ways to think about it. So now this wasn't even a recession. This was just, there was some anticipation of a downturn, which we're starting to see this year. So it took longer than normal than the market expected. Um, but there was a danger of a recession here for sure. And the stock fell 
more like at least 55%. It was probably pushing more like 60%. So um, we know that it can happen even without a recession. So the market will predict that the recession is coming and the stock price will fall a lot before the recession even gets here. Sometimes when the recession doesn't even get here. Um, but even if there had been a recession, you might have had to hold a while in order to make your money in order to make your money back. I think it came back pretty quickly. Well, let's go look at actually what the I sometimes make tables of these recovery periods so we can get an idea here. But yeah, so this is a better example. So what I say they fell 80% that might I don't know if that was off. They don't even have the high here. So that was like an 80% decline. Let's say you bought I don't know October when everything was going crazy and you're like, this is so cheap. Okay, you come in, that's not even, well, we can go closer to the bottom. Let's do like nine bucks a share. So before that doubled, just a double. So you need 20 bucks a share. You're looking, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking. Here we go. We'll call it, we'll call that a double. Almost exactly a double, okay. So that's a 16% kegger, but it took how many years? Five years. This is kind of what you need to be prepared for, right? If you're buying like 50% off the high, you can still do good. It can still take five years. If it even takes five years to recover, you're getting like a 16% kegger, but you might have to wait, you know? it's So it's, it's still okay, but you don't really wanna be buying up in the peak. You could wait forever and ever and never get your, I don't, this probably isn't even the peak, right? So and you only get a 3% kegger for after 15 years or something. So that can definitely happen. Um, I think now with the secular growth trend that we have, it's less likely to happen. So what I'm leading up to here is if you wanted to be more aggressive than I am and try to buy one of these potential dips, since we know kind of this secular growth trends in place um, and buy after like a 50% decline, that would have got you in here. You could actually sold for a double already in a year and a half so that would have been really good and as long as you don't panic and sell if it falls another 50 percent <laughs> during a real downturn um, then you can still probably do well if if you're buying out off of after a 50 percent decline so one other strategy which i might actually end up using myself i haven't um i follow tons of semiconductors so i kind of you know it just depends from from one to one. I think it'd be totally fine to come in with a 1% weighted position after a 50% decline, but then be prepared to buy another position, one more position after a 65% decline. Um, that's totally a reasonable strategy with a stock like this one. Um, and then that way you're not panicking when the stock price falls another 50%, you're thinking about buying more of it. And then you can lower your cost basis, all other things being equal, and wait for that recovery. Um, and you should be able to get it. You might have to wait several years if it's a bad downturn. But the potential of the market has shown, if nothing bad happens to the business um, that's not just cyclical related, then you should be able to get a good return over a medium term time period, which is what I aim for with these. Um, Okay, yeah, and they don't have like a ton of debt or anything. I mean, yeah, I mean, this one's pretty straightforward. Um, I think I might even consider buying a position when it's 50% off the high again, um, which it will be at some point. You don't know, you don't have to predict when it's going to be. I just watch the ones that, and wait for the ones to hit the prices that I want. So um, you don't have to predict when it's gonna happen. You just have to know that it will happen at some point, probably. Like some of them will. Like last time I got a couple, um, and it, it will probably happen again in the future because that's just the cyclical nature of these guys' business. Um, okay, if you found this useful, hit the subscribe button, um, hit the like button, and if you have a request, drop it down in the comment section. I will get it on my list and I will make a video. Later, everybody.